All right, as usual, Christian Latanzio here for you. Uh, use the raise your hand feature if you have a question. Uh, let's start with Jorge today. Hey, Christian, uh, good to see you. How are you? Good, Jorge. Thank you very much. You? Good, good. Just want your overall thoughts so far in terms of uh, you guys heading over to uh, California and that first preseason game with uh, LA Galaxy. I think, uh, as you know, as everybody knows, not just in the US, but unfortunately everywhere, we had a very difficult uh, start, a great start. And then after we were hit by uh, the tsunami. And then uh, I think the boys are recovering well and they, uh, they're doing they're doing really well. They are putting a lot of intensity in the work. They are coming together as a group more and more. And so as a coaching staff, I don't think we can ask for more in terms of in terms of uh, uh, attitude, commitment to Charlotte FC. They are giving everything that they have. Uh, today also is a day in which we do a double. You can see the boys are really tired, but uh, they, they know that this is typical of, uh, of preseason uh, because we are pushing them a lot and I think that against uh, LAFC gave a good account of themselves uh, even I like to mix the teams as I said in the past and uh, I think that the boys uh, responded well to the challenges that we got from LAFC Galaxy that is one of the teams more with more history and tradition in the league uh, with some very very good players and I felt that uh, uh, the boys um, play with a lot of personality in both halves and uh, gave them a really strong game which is what we wanted to put 45 minutes in the legs that was our first uh, uh, priority and also to start to look tactically the principle uh, that we want to keep developing. Nice. And then could you give me an update on Corujo? What would be the time frame? Like, um, are you expecting him to be back on the pitch? Uh, the exact uh, time frame is difficult to say because things can change uh, over the next uh, few weeks. So I don't really know exactly, but I know that uh, one thing that I, I know is that uh, Guzman is fully involved with the team, he train hard every day. He start to do part of the warm up with the boys, uh, not in all activities. Just does the first part of the warm up, but just to let you know that uh, Guzman is on the pitch, and he's uh, obviously doing his rehab, uh, taking his rehab very seriously. You know what kind of character Guzman is, and so is. Uh, we hope that he's gonna be um, available before, before the projected time but we are not sure exactly on the exact day where he can resume full training gotcha and then one last one just um Vinny Mello last season didn't get any participation with the team because of injuries um how's his development been so far um with this preseason also scoring in LA in <clears throat> California yeah Vinny Vinny I was thinking that uh, the two uh, against Galaxy, we didn't have the two new signings. We had obviously Amadi Diop playing, and we had Jack Niels, a young guy playing, and also Andrew Privet from the college. But obviously, the two main signings that we had uh, are Ashley Westwood and Enzo Copetti didn't play. But actually, we had a new player in uh, in Vini, in the sense that now he's training every single session and he's improving on a daily basis. We can see his talent. We can see his ability to play with the team and to play the striker position. And uh, we are very happy with him. Uh, obviously, we are just at the beginning, but uh, in comparison to last season, it's just a joy to see him uh, training on a daily basis with the team and then not even think about anything else, but putting him in the training like every other player. So for me, this is also a big, big um, player, new player that uh, new meaning you know, that we are going to have in, in Charlotte for this season. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Jorge. Let's go to Willie P uh, and then Ashley Mahoney on deck. 
Hey, Christian, uh, wanted to once again continue to extend uh, the condolences for you and the team, as I know that what you're doing is a, is a very difficult thing to recover from. Um, therapeutic might not be the right adjective, but I guess what would you describe uh, Saturday's game as from that standpoint and trying to uh, be a part of that recovery process? Listen, Will, um, as we said in the, in the ceremony in honor of Anton, of his life, as he was called, uh, I promise to Anton and his family that we are going to keep him always in our memories, alive. And uh, I, I always talk about him in the present sentence because I think it's we want him to be with us. And, uh, and Anton would be the first one that doesn't want us to you know, to be down or to be quiet, like his dad told me. His dad uh, uh, told me many stories of when he was a kid full of energy and that he would be the first one to want us just to move on, like we are doing and we are doing with him, we are doing for him, as well as for, obviously, for the club, the supporters and uh, and ourselves. But Anton is very much in our mind and uh, the group is coming together uh, strongly, I believe. I can see it on a daily basis. And uh, with Anton in our mind every day because he gives us energy and not uh, and not anything negative uh, that people might think. It's just a very, very positive presence in, in our everyday life. In terms of melding your personnel, you mentioned that you know, a lot of the team is very much the same, but you do have some new signings. What adjustments will you make to your style of play formationally or anything of that nature that you've I guess, absorbed from the training and, and trying to see how these pieces fit together this season compared to last year? First of all, uh, you can't expect me to say you that, to tell you that, because for as much... <laughs> no, I'm joking, Will. It's just uh, we are... Is, for me, uh, it's good to see also players in different positions. I tried Jan as a left back. I'm trying different uh, DJ. In a different position, then I think that uh, having also people have to take things into consideration. When you we play the first half against LA Galaxy and they play against Chicharito, they play against you know some of the most skillful players, Douglas Costa and so forth. And then we have DJ and Jack, 17 years old, and at the back, and we only consider the penalty that for me is also dubious because I think Chicharito played really well the the, the play. You know, waiting for our young to to be close, and then. But anyway, so I think it's it, this is a time just to come to your question to try things and to establish and to reinvigorate our um, principle of play. So we want to become a team that is very aggressive, that hunt the opposition, that are aggressive with the ball and without the ball. And this is what uh, we are working on, trying a couple of different things with the ball, different way of pressing uh, in different zone of the field without the ball. And so it's just a moment in which we are uh, trying things and uh, reinforcing things at the same time. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Will. We'll go to Ashley now and we'll have Carol Walton on deck. Coach, I'm, I'm sure you're going to hear this from every single one of us today, but we do really appreciate your time this afternoon. Um, Enzo Capetti was, for many people last week, the first time that they saw him here in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium. Um, circumstances, heartbreaking, of course, but was his arrival in the United States for the celebration of life something that he said he wanted to do or was, did it just happen to line up that his paperwork allowed him to be here in time for it? No, both, both actually, in the sense that the paper, we wanted the answer to come to Charlotte as soon as possible, as soon as the paper uh, arrived. But there was a day in which he had to do the medical and uh, he could have easily uh, not be present. But he wanted to be present with the team. He asked expressly that he was with us. And so we actually delayed his medical, part of his medical the day after because uh, Enzo wanted to be part of the team. And, you know, he knew, obviously, being a football player, how much an event, even if he didn't know Anton personally. But he, he knows how 
the team can be affected and he wanted to show his uh, his presence and his uh, support to his new family. So I thought that uh, he was very welcomed and uh, it was, in my opinion, the right thing to do. That being said, he's been with the club for about a week now. How is he adjusting and uh, adapting into the system so far? And so it's another one like Ashley that obviously Ashley is, is also helped by the fact that uh, he speaks uh, uh, he speaks English uh, as a first language, but then so despite his, uh, his learning English and still is not fluent, but uh, he fitted in really well and is uh, is determined to to be a, a player that uh, bring people together. So he arrived and immediately it looks like he has been part of this team. They was surprised. Yeah, I was surprised to see how how well he fitted into the the family and seamless. You know, seamlessly he was. Uh, he arrived and starting to talk with everybody, also to try his English and uh, making fun of himself. But you can tell that he's a guy that is interacting with everybody and uh, and he's a, he's a character that we we all like, apart from his ability and from for it from him from his experience in playing in Argentina and in a in a in a big club in Argentina, but at the same time he arrived and impressed everybody with his uh, with his attitude. Really smiley, really positive on a daily basis. And lastly, in terms of Anton's death in Florida, whose call was it to return to Charlotte um, as quickly as the team did? And how were you informed of the boating accident? We were informed by the medical team that uh, there was an accident and and then we were kept informed because we had uh, uh, our head of security and one of the medical staff in the hospital trying to get as many info as possible as they were as they were coming through. So I thought that they were all the time all the time uh, given to us. And uh, yeah, it was a collective decision because I think that it was too painful for everybody to be anchored to a place that, you know, he, we, our heads were, were not uh, into training mode and I wanted everybody to regroup, to go back to the family and also welcome Anton's family, Charlotte, you know, uh, once we knew the news, he, he was. Uh, we needed to to regain our focus and thoughts because it was a very painful moment. And when you are living a situation like that, you want to be surrounded by your dear ones, and you don't want to be in somewhere to do precision. You know, for two or three days, I think it wasn't. Nobody was in the right frame of mind to train. To think about training, we were just mourning and uh, digesting the the unbelievable sad news. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Carol, uh, and then we'll have Arturo on deck. Christian, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, Thank you. Just can't imagine. And I'm curious how, is there someone that you turn to who you can go to for advice? I mean, this is a tough, tough thing. You know, and I'm kind of curious how you how you're going to balance doing your job and the job everybody needs to do, but also paying respect and not just minimizing what you guys are dealing with mentally. No, but uh, Carol, thank you very much for your for your words. But we also had uh, a lot of help and support from professionals in the field that they came around to to give us support and help if we needed. It was available to everybody. Um, we had uh, one person that came uh, to help us to manage the immediate situation. Mike, that is still with us here, that is uh, help us to regain our thoughts under very pressure situation under very sad circumstances. 
And then the Panthers also helped and the MLS also helped. We had uh, our owner, uh, Mr. Tepper, who was extremely uh, understanding, extremely supportive. So anything that we needed, he put us at disposal. And so everybody was uh, really together to give us ourselves support and strength in a moment in which it would have been easy to lose our heads and you know our emotions but actually staying together it was uh, it was the best thing to do and we stick together and everybody played a very important part i mean i cannot tell you now exactly what everybody did but everybody at the football club was extremely helpful and successful in helping people and supporting people and if we could go through that uh, is because of the commitment that everybody put into that and the, the love that everybody put into that. So I'm very proud of being part of Charlotte FC. I can tell you that uh, without any shadow of a doubt. Is there anything you're already working into your routine, if, even if it's taken a moment before training? Or um, is that kind of something that will happen organically, you think? Yeah, it's happened organically. And as I told you, for me, it, was, it gave me a lot of strength to talk with uh, Anton's dad and the family that uh, obviously everybody's talking about the legacy of Anton, but the legacy of Anton in a sporting way is in our hands. So it's up to us. It's our responsibility. And we want to come together stronger uh, than before because we have Anton with us. So it is something that uh, organically we are getting used to it, uh, even though in a way you never get used to it. But I believe that uh, uh, Anton is giving something more individually and uh, collectively. I can feel that. I don't know how it's difficult to explain this kind of feeling, but I just, I just feel it. And uh, is I, I see as my special assistant on a daily basis, for example. And then I have two quick soccer questions. One is: Do you expect either Westwood or? Capetti to get in on some of these scrimmages coming up. Yeah, I'm actually still uh, actually still uh, in England waiting for uh, his interview for the for the green card. Sorry for the um, for the visa, so that he can be officially uh, can play official games for for us. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he will be able to play a part in uh, in the game that we play Saturday against Vancouver. I uh, certainly will not be able to play against uh, DC yet, unfortunately, but Enzo will. Enzo will play a part. I mean, touching wood and nothing happened between now and uh, and Wednesday, but he's training. He might not be able to play uh, as many minutes as we would like uh, because he, he was training on his own, but he's already working hard and uh, he's one of those guys that is really intense in the way he thinks football, in the way he plays football. And he will take part in the game on the, on Wednesday. Great. One last question about Adam Armour. Is he is he full go with where you guys are? Is he still maybe by the start of the season going to be full go? Yeah. Uh, Adam is a, is a guy that uh, is a player that we want to, you know, want to nurture really carefully because he had this big accident and he started the preseason really well and then uh, maybe he was uh, uh, oh, we were over keen but uh, he's fine, he's fine, he's well he's training, he trained again today uh, we, we are managing his load because uh, we want him, when he come back with the team, we want him to stay with the first team and we don't want him you know, maybe to go to lose him for another, even for another week is not a good idea. So we are managing his load, he's with us, he does all the activities with us. Uh, he doesn't take part on the pitch in every activity that we do, but uh, the situation at the moment is he looks, uh, he looks fine and promising and uh, we monitor him on a daily basis. And uh, I cannot foresee any major setbacks with that. Still thinking of him as a winger or fullback or either? <laughs> so the football, so the football with Ducado. So maybe even a goalie. <laughs>
No, but I, 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 I like his ability to play as an attacking player because I think he has a knack to score goals. Uh, he's quite acrobatic in his play. He has a good left foot. He's good in the air, as he showed even in the first goal that he scored in Atlanta. I think he has got a special talent to score goals. And so when you have a player that can contribute with that, you don't want to play him too much at the back, you see? So my idea was to try him a little bit higher on the pitch and uh, we will see. We still have got time between now and the beginning of season. But this is a, something that I will try even during the season in any case. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Carol. Let's go to Arturo uh, and then we'll get to Mike Solarte after that. Um, Arturo, if we can keep it to one, I'd like to get a couple people here at the end. Uh, we're cutting close on time. We have a second session that coach has to get to. Thanks. Sure. Christian, nice to talk to you again. Um, could you give us an update on Kalina's uh, injury? We saw him at Anton's celebration of life. He was walking. Uh, do you guys uh, have a time frame for him? Uh, to start uh, practicing again and maybe uh, using him for the first month or the second month of the season. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, Kale is um, is another player that uh, we monitor and I don't have an exactly time frame, especially for him because after the operation, he's, uh, he's evaluating his uh, progress on a daily basis. When I spoke with him, last time and uh, no, he was uh, very he was feeling a lot better and that was very promising because for a few weeks he felt this discomfort that prevented him from even moving right let alone training but now he feels uh, a lot better and he, we left him in Charlotte because he's doing uh, a lot of rehab and I, we thought that it was the best thing to do to and just focusing on coming back and get back to track. I think also Christian is a guy that uh, works really hard. He's a worker call work colleague like uh, like Guzman, and so these guys. Uh, I don't have any doubt that they are. Sometimes he's one of those guys that you have to push them back a little bit rather than to push them forward because they are so keen and they want to come back as soon as possible. So again, with him, we are monitoring the, the situation. Uh, depending on how each physio session goes, but I know that he's moving on, moving along quite nicely. Thanks, Arturo. Let's go, to Mike. Hello, Christian. Good to see you again, sir. Uh, again, our our thoughts are with you and the team uh, as you guys yeah. battle through. Uh, I know that you have Anton uh, in your in your thoughts as you I guys mean, move forward, as you've said. But as you as you, as you go through this training session and, you know, Florida to California and all the things leading up to the season, uh, you know, you mentioned the team is coming together stronger and quicker. Um, how are they adapting to the game model that you want to play? Because for the guys that were here last year, they started with a different leader, finished under you. So this being your first full training camp, yeah. this, there, re there really is no playbook for what you guys have gone through. But how are they adapting to your play, your your game model, and and getting pre prep for the season? They're adapting really well, Mike. Uh, I'm we as a coaching staff are really uh, happy. We talk on this, uh, we talk about this on a daily basis, and we are very happy how the boys are adapting. Even the guys that uh, came to help the college boys and the guys that they were drafted. Uh, they adapt, uh, adapted, and they carry good attitude. Our the, the players that came last season, uh, that I know from last season, obviously they were used to a different preseason. And um, but the principle uh, we already had something, as I said in the in the past to you guys, I told you that the first until the game against Cincinnati. For me, that was our first preseason because every coach, as I said many times, has his own way of playing the game, has his own nuances. Um, doesn't mean they are better or worse, just different. And I wanted to give our team the football that I know and the football that uh, I like to play. So that, that took a little bit of time and adjustment. And during the season is obviously a little bit harder because you have to 
uh, uni unify the results together with uh, changing the principle of play. And then um, this precision is actually where we can really uh, put on paper and uh, and on the video session and on the pitch the principle. And the guys are adapting. Keep in mind that this we have been disrupted and this is uh, should be week three, but in a way it feels like week 27 because emotionally has been really strong. But on the pitch is actually week two because we lost a few days and even the game we played against Galaxy, the Galaxy already played the game against DC. We should have played the game against St. Louis, which we didn't. So we are a little bit delayed with that, but I can tell you that the boys didn't look out of place or out of pace against the, the Galaxy. And uh, we went toe to toe in the game, even though the result is not the most important thing in those games, but the performance, but we were very happy. And that is a testimony of how the guys are really working seriously and hard on a daily basis. Can't complain. You can see a few tired eyes, but uh, I can tell you that they are pushing uh, hard on a daily basis. Also because the coaching staff is behind them, supporting them, but make sure that they give their best uh, every day. Thank you, Christian. Look forward to seeing you back in Charlotte. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it, Mike. All right, guys, we're running out of time, so we're going to go uh, final one with Claudio, uh, and that will finish the press conference. Ciao, Christian. Buenas. Ciao, Claudio. Um, te voy a hablar en español y tú me contestas en inglés. Um, okay. if, if I understand, Claudio, because I'm not, I'm not so fluent in Spanish as you might think. So no, parla in Italian or va bene lo stesso. <laughs> parla in Italian. Sí, va bene. No, eh, eh, primero, eh, lo siento mucho por la pérdida de uno de tus chicos. Yes. Ah, eh, y quería hacerte una pregunta acerca de si recibiste de otros mister. Eh, algún consejo o algo acerca de esta situación, no sé, de Fabio, de Roberto, de alguno de esos míster. Sí, sí, I, from different players, uh, I got, uh, these are things that they stay, normally you want to keep them private, Claudio, because, because this is a private matter, and, uh, but uh, yes, yes, I got messages, not just from them, also from uh, previous uh, from many um, ex players that now they are coaches or they are uh, still active in football in different matters. But uh, you know, even many, many, many people, many, many players, many coaches reached out to to show send the best wishes and condolences for Anton and uh, so Roberto did uh, also David Villa that was with us in New York uh, he was one of the guys that reached one of the first to reach out and to express condolences I mean when you work in football everybody gets touched from uh, losing the life of a young of a young player and uh, doesn't matter whether you knew him or not so you understand that you know this is such a tragic event uh, because he's a teammate and and the, everybody understands in the world, but especially for football players that we live for, you know, for professional players in every league, whether it's football, whether it's uh, basketball, American football, whatever it is, might be. We, you live as a family because you spend more time. Sometimes we say jokingly, but it's the reality. We spend more time between ourselves than with the with our families because we travel together we meet on a daily basis sometimes we do double sessions so we spend so much time that you become uh you become a family you become a close community and so you get touched even if something happens to another club you can have empathy and identify with what happened so just uh to let you know that we got i got many many messages from all the clubs I I work with. That's it. Okay. okay. Thank you, everyone. Christian, thank you for your time as always. Um, if you guys need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.